Now building on the last video I did on garden bird photography, I want to get a little bit more creative and show you guys how I've been taking images such as these. Now these are some images that I've taken over the last couple of days in the garden and some of the things that I'm really considering here is my background and the direction of light. If you haven't seen my last video of setting up my garden here for garden bird photography, you can always check it out and you can get more of a glimpse into how I've set it up. And also you can have a look at how I took some of these images. I'm quite lucky here. The sun rises behind me down here and it sets down that way. So I've set up my feeder so that throughout the winter months I'm pretty much getting continuous backlight. So the sun doesn't have to be directly behind uh, the subject all the time. In fact, it gets very tricky when it's right behind because it becomes such a big difference between the brightness of the sun and the darker bird. So then you kind of reduce to taking silhouette shots. A lot of the times I'll be photographing when the sun is behind the subject but it's a little bit further maybe to the side or up above but the sun is helping reflect some of the background elements and I can really show off. I had some of the yellow leaves here earlier. I've also had some of the red looking beech trees or even some of the grass. Smaller colors in the background. You're kind of half lit up and you create these bokeh balls and just nice backgrounds for your subject. And when the sun is a little bit off to the side then it means that you can actually have a bit of color and detail on the bird as well, which I really like. As you're not having any kind of direct light on the bird itself, images like that can often look a little bit faded. So you do have to give a little bit of extra punch, you know, increase the contrast and saturation in post-processing. There's a lot of ways to experiment and that's what I'm doing here. I have been setting up some branches here and there. I have a squirrel feeder on the wall down here. I'm putting some of the peanuts on the outside, trying different branches in different locations just to see what they're going to jump on and when. Not everything works out, you got to experiment and try out different things. I remember coming across a blog post a little while back and they had a really good term for what to look for in your backgrounds when it comes to getting that kind of out of focus bokeh elements and they call this the sparkle spots. Basically go look for the sparkle spots and that's what I've been doing in the garden here. I've really been looking at the sparkle spots in my background and it can be anything from leaves on a tree that's being lit up by the sun you get a little bit of sun filtering through them it could just be gaps in amongst the trees and the branches where this light is behind them it can be artificial it can be natural i've had cars parked in the back here which creates these little bokeh balls with their lights or just reflections off the car some of my favorite backgrounds here is when you get the light filtering through the forest and you get a little bit of wind in the forest it's just a constantly changing background where you have these little lit up bokeh balls and bits of leaves and foliage you know, drifting back and forth so no two images are the same.
sun is actually quite off to the side in the Notatch image, but you can just about see a little bit of rim lighting underneath the feathers of the Notatch. I really look upon this type of photography as practice. I'm practicing for real life scenarios out in nature when I can't control all the elements. But obviously, I'm enjoying it and I'm creating some unique images along the way, which is always fun. Just before it was setting last night, I had the sun all the way down. It was peeking through a couple of the branches in the background. When it's really tricky, really bright and really dark, I'll often go to manual focus. I'll set it up on my Olympus so that I use peaking and it shows up in the outline of the bird of what is actually in focus. Now, if you're curious about more of my Olympus settings for wildlife, I have a newsletter you can sign up on my website. I'll send emails regularly with a little bit of tips and tricks for your Olympus uh, setup for wildlife photography. I did manage to get this one shot here where you see one of the uh, one of the great hits taking a dive off the branch that I'd set up for it. And you can really see some of the colors kind of filtering through the feathers. I had to really increase my shutter speed so that I wouldn't blow out the background. And that is one of the things that you want to be careful with when you're doing this kind of photography is that if you can you know if you can have a highlight alert set up on your camera or at least checking your histogram that you're not blowing out that background very important and particularly when you get you know when you get the sun almost right behind it gets really bright background and the, the bird itself becomes so much darker so usually you kind of have to go for a silhouette image as the sun goes a little bit higher as well i have to duck down lower to get that sun as my background so you really have to tweak a little bit so very often i won't even be using the tripod i want to be free and i can move about and I can get that background exactly the way I want it, which is really important when you have the really bright sun as a background and you're turning everything else into darkness. So you gotta align that bird perfectly within that little ball of light. Try different things, experiment. It's not always gonna work. And I have loads of failed attempts here, but you know, tweaking little elements here. One of the things that I do a lot of as well is that when I keep feeding birds and squirrels here in the garden. If I want to try and direct them to a certain place in the garden, for instance, a branch that I've set up, I'll try and close off some of the feeding stations. I'll put a little board in front of the squirrel feeder and I'll take off some of the bird feeder, take away some of the food and I've left it on a board right next to the, the trunk. Now the tree trunk that I have here is, uh, is really good for noctashes because they will land very often. They will land on a tree trunk like that and they will climb down it. I do remember to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of these videos and hit that bell to be notified so you get notifications when new videos come out anyways i hope you guys enjoyed that and i hope you got something from it do let me know below if you guys are photographing birds in the garden it can be a great little experiment over winter thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you next time